Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dahlia Society. I have some brand new fabrics to show you today, but I also have a heap of sweater inspiration for you. A lot of you have been asking about finding unique sweaters to go with some knits because look, it's pretty chilly here in Melbourne. We are all looking for some cuddly things to wear. And in fact, I've been sending out fabrics to all over Australia. I think a lot of you guys are really craving knitwear and knitwear patterns at the moment. So before I get started on that, I'm going to show you some beautiful new fabrics that I just received in store. But before I actually get on that, I'm going to show you what I've got on today, a brand new make. I've made a Stylark Nina cardigan pattern. It's a favorite Cardi pattern I made about two years ago now. I love the unique style lines to it. It's got a lovely waterfall looking front. It's got that kind of shaped in, nipped in waist. So it's not an oversized kind of um, huge cardigan. It's got a bit of shaping there. So it's quite a lovely cardigan to wear if you're going out or maybe going to work. And I've made it in the Angora in the golden ash color that I have on the online store. And my mum's actually made herself a songbird in the same fabric. We both love this color and it really goes with so much in the wardrobe. It was actually really easy to sew with as well. It's not overly uh, bulky. It's just got a lovely weight and texture. And I've done it all with my serger as well. So I'll put some pics in so you can see exactly how it looks, but it's got a lovely drape to the front. It looks like a complicated pattern, but it's actually not. It's quite easy and simple and you can have it done within a day. Um, but I've got it on with my Hello Gorgeous Pattern Emporium cotton jersey leopard print top. So um, yeah, loving sewing some nice cuddly knits. I've also got half done uh, a party dress. Of course, it's my 50th next week. We're actually going out for a lunch on Sunday with about 50 of our I know, closest friends and relatives. And I've made a dress for that. And I can't wait to show you guys how it turned out. And I had a lot of trials and tribulations. If you're like me and you have to make something special, that is when things go wrong. I can guarantee you when that pressure hits, uh, things start going haywire. It is amazing. I don't know what happens, but I can be making things all year and sewing and coasting along. And as soon as that pressure's on to make something a bit special, things happen. I don't know what it is. So is that just me or is it you guys as well? The pressure, the pressure starts. And also I find it very hard to decide when I have so many options. I gave myself way too many options with fabric and with patterns that I just had trouble making my mind up. So I actually made two dresses, half done one and, and fully done another. Um, I'll be having another day out with my daughters. We're going out to a kind of Alice in Wonderland themed um, restaurant for like a high tea. So that would be where the other one's being worn. But yeah, gosh, it was hard choosing a pattern. So what would you like to see first? I'm guessing fabrics and then pattern inspo because if you're like me, uh, these new fabrics were ordered a couple of months ago now and boy oh boy was I dying to get these in for you guys because when I chose them, I actually chose a lot of them with my mum in mind even though she wasn't with me that day. And when I went back to pick them up with her, she just fell in love with them all. So I was so thrilled because it was exactly what I was hoping. Um, they are a beautiful brand exclusively from the Netherlands. So, of course, they've come a long way. Uh, the Netherlands are so well known for their beautiful quality fabrics, and especially their prints and their natural fibers. So this brand is called Mutsayers, and it's a beautiful um, fabric company that specializes in really unique prints, but as I say, quality fabrics. So if you love these, I will be definitely getting some more in for spring, summer. And I love, love their color range. It's very, very unique, but their prints are also really unique. The first one I have here is called Le Jardin, and it is a magnificent uh, mauvey lilac color French terry. Uh, it's 250 GSM, and these are both 150 wide. And the color in this is just so delicate and powdery and pretty it's a lovely lilac with a gorgeous pinky color um rose print through it like a peony rose just so delicate and vintagey looking um i think that will definitely appeal to a lot of you guys and i know with mum she just loved loved the color um the back of that of course a french terry that loop effect gives it that little bit more um warmth and the stretch in that it's got a great stretch across as well as a good vertical stretch so i think that would make a stunning um, sweater dress or something with a puff sleeve um, something really really stunning you can make out of that fabric but 
um, just divine and I knew you guys would just fall in love with it too. I was really hoping you would. Um, so some of the French terriers are just absolutely beautiful, the prints. Uh, the hardest thing is choosing fabric because, of course, I just loved everything they had there. And, yeah, it was either – Go for more wovens. Uh, at the moment, I'm loving the knits. I think a lot of you guys are really craving more knits as well. As well. So uh, I've got a little bit of each, so I really hope you love the other ones I've chosen as well. But that one, the Le Jardin, is the French Terry. So amazingly soft, beautiful quality, um, having that natural fibre. So 95% cotton, 5% spandex. Um, can make a beautiful sweater top as well. Um, you, of course, you can put a ribbing with it if you wanted to, but you really don't need to. You can actually use that same fabric to make your neck binding, uh, neck band and wrist binding as well, cuff detail. Um, but yeah, a beautiful sweater dressing that would just be incredible. So that is the Le Jardin. The next one I have here is called um, Leopard in Pastel, and this is a cotton jersey. This is a 200 GSM, so a little bit lighter weight than the French Terry, but the colour and the print was just so appealing. I just thought I've never seen a leopard print in a pastel colourway before. This range is called Pastel Paradise, so I really uh, can see everything uh, complementing each other, and I think a lot of these will also complement um, the other knits I have in store as well as the coatings. The actual coatings, I have the green and the, well, the olive and the dusty rose quartz just go so nicely with all of these. So if you're looking for a whole ensemble, it will complement each other beautifully. But this would just make the most beautiful sweater top, wouldn't it? That beautiful leopard, um, small scale leopard print with the lilac and that gorgeous coral pink. And the gold flecks are just so unusual. I've never seen a leopard print quite like that. Um, yeah, just lovely dusty colours. Uh, those kind of colours are so nice for wearing in winter. They really do kind of give you that cosy feel as well as being great for summer. Uh, pale pinks. I'm really loving pale pinks at the moment. I just think they are just divine to wear and they really do warm up the skin tone for winter as well. So that is the cotton jersey. And again, 150 wide, great stretch and vertical, but not like your heavy kind of rayon knit. It's more of a light cotton jersey but just such beautiful quality i think these are not going to last very long i really hope um, they sell well because i really am dying to get more of the colorways and different prints in that they have to offer there so very unique prints and colorways um, just so beautiful and soft the next two i have here are some woven viscose now this viscose is just the most divine quality it's soft floaty and drapey this one is called antique flamingo it is a gorgeous kind of corally peach colorway um, the color of the green against that background is just stunning and you can see the flamingos are kind of like a really delicate uh, illustration they're very soft and very vintagey effects so not like the usual kind of flamingo you see really bright and loud and bold these are a bit more um, soft and muted but with that green, I just think an olive green would look stunning over that or maybe an olive green pair of pants. Um, but a dress net would be also amazing and so drapey and feminine. Look at that colour. The movement of that is really soft. It's 110 GSM and 140 wide as well. So I haven't seen anything around quite like that with these colourways as well. I've seen so many abstracts and brights but... To me, what appealed to me was the softness and, and the illustration being so delicate and having that real vintage kind of look to it as well. So that colour is just so pretty, isn't it? That peachy apricot colour. Um, almost like the coral sort of side of pink. So if you're not a real pinky pink person, you might prefer this kind of soft corally pink. But that is the Antique Flamingo. The last one I have here is just a stunning print. Uh, it's called uh, Mystic Dragonfly and it is in the most stunning kind of musky pink colour. Really, really pretty pink and the soft grey hues that it has in there, I think it will just uh, complement grey perfectly. If you've got a grey cardigan or some grey uh, jacket or pair of pants, that would look so beautiful as well. Um, the, as I say, the softness of this viscose is just incredible. Um, just got the most beautiful drape to it as well. So I think you're going to be really impressed with the quality of um, the Motsayas brand fabrics, of course, 
Uh, yes, I say the Netherlands have got such a great reputation for their fabrics and you can see why. So I definitely think that uh, I'll be stocking some more of these in the future because they're just so unusual and so pretty. Um, very touchable. As soon as mum and I went in to pick them up, we just uh, strode to them. I thought, wow, these are really, really lovely. Um, the the colour and the print in that as well, very soft and beautiful. So that is the new fabrics for this week. So really exciting to have some different colour palettes into the store as well. I love my brides. I also love some soft kind of uh, romantic style colour palettes to have in there as well. It's really nice to break it up a little bit. So uh, moving on to some pattern suggestions. I've had quite a few people ask me actually about some pattern suggestions for sweaters that they've looked into making sweaters and needed a bit of inspo. And although I do love making my firm favourites, things like the unwind sweater, um, things like your um, grain line linden sweater, there's so many firm favourites, even the Megan Nielsen Jarra sweater. I'm looking today at really unique style sweaters that have got a bit of maybe some detailing there that nothing else has got uh, around like it. So maybe a bit more of a modern edge or a modern take. Um, but I hope you like what I've got here to show you. Also got a book to show you through too. I just received a brand new book that I purchased. I think you're going to love. Actually, I'll show you that first because it's really, really interesting. Uh, this is from Draper's Fabrics. It's called Textilepedia. It's an encyclopedia basically covering every single textile known to man. It uh, has the origins, what it's uh, basically what, what it's made from, how they make it, what they make it with, different knits as well, as far as like a different style of knits, cable knits. Um, so it's got every single fabric in there. Um, and how it came to be about you know, being made and being sourced, what countries it's grown in. Um, it's really fascinating read. So it is definitely like your Bible of textiles. And I just think even though we know we can Google search fabrics, sometimes it's just so nice to have it there uh, on the coffee table to pick up and have a flick through. So the actual picks are really interesting because they look like they're just stuck on pieces of um, textiles. And I know my daughter, Phoebe, did a course on textiles a couple of years ago and she brought home a lot of information with swatches and we were like feeling and stroking things like your silks, your fibres. Uh, it's just exactly like that. So it's just so nice to be able to read something and have it, have it like all the different weaves as well. So a really thorough encyclopedia on textiles. So I can highly recommend that. Uh, fascinating, yeah, to see things up close that you may not have never seen um, the fabrics, yeah, it's just in a natural state like that before they died. So, it, yeah, it's really fascinating. So that one I'll link below as well. And I'm also um, nearly finished my, is my young book, which is also a fantastic read. Wow, what a life that lady has led. I tell you, it's, uh, it's fascinating. You would never know from watching The Great British Sewing Bee unless you've read her book and seen some of the antics and things that she's um, been up to in her life. She's it's just a fascinating person to read about. Now, I've also just ordered myself four back issues of Fiber Mood. Uh, I know Gabrielle from Cloth Edit does stock them in her online store. Uh, and although I love my Fiber Mood book, I love flicking through it and getting some inspo. I don't subscribe to it. I've just uh, let my cashmere at subscription go because I found that the last four of my patterns, although they were fantastic, I haven't made any of them. And I just feel like that they may be better off you know, spending my money on patterns when they come out that I absolutely love and want to invest my money into that way rather than just having a subscription base just mounting up mounting up um, but I do know that you know Jenny's patterns are brilliant and she has got some fantastic fitting advice there as well and the patterns that I have got I really do love and I will be definitely making them one day um, but the great thing about that is you can cancel and resubscribe at any time if you love the new patterns that come out each month you can resubscribe quite easily uh, it's just that you can't get the ones that you've missed out on so I would probably Probably rather buy the Fiber Mood mags at the moment to get a bit of inspo there. But although I love looking through the um, inspiration there, you can see the photography. I am not a huge fan of tracing, um, so that's one thing that I will struggle with because I find that you have to had if you have to add your seam allowance, which you will have to do to all these patterns, uh, and the maze of tracing that many patterns together is not. Um, you know, it's <laughs> time is money, and I look the amount of time I would have to put into that. Uh, I think I would rather just purchase the PDF patterns that I love. So even though that's a bit more pricey doing it that way, um, I think that it might be a bit 
more doable for me. I just don't see myself being able to trace that many patterns out. But uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Do you subscribe to Fiber Mood? Do you um, trace your patterns? Or you're like me and you'd rather have PDF printed out that already have the seam allowances there. So although it's a bit of the lazier side, I find it just quick and more accessible that way. Um, Price-wise, it probably ends up you know, costing you a lot more, but I personally um, don't subscribe to the, you know, to, to subscription-wise for the digital and the paper because it is quite pricey. And unless you are printing out every one of those patterns or tracing every one, you know, it can become you know quite a lot of money there and you want to make sure that you're using the patterns that you love. So that way for me, I love looking at the inspo, so I might pick out one or two patterns each time a new mag comes out and just print out the PDFs that way. But who knows, I may even try and uh, trace one off and see how I go um, when I have a bit more time, even something a bit more simple. But um, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about that as well. I really love the look of the new Fiber Mood issue in the summer. You guys in the Northern Hemisphere are making some beautiful dresses and I had to buy that issue because there's a few things. There's probably at least four or five things in there that I would definitely make. Um, so I will probably be printing them out on PDF, whereas some of these other issues, there might be only one, one or two that I really want to print out. So I just think it gives you that lovely you know, thing to flick through. Uh, and all the instructions are also in there, which I find it so nice to have a booklet of instructions um, rather than looking on your iPad or your, your uh, laptop for instructions all the time. And having the line drawings as well is really handy too. So Fiber Mood, it's interesting to hear. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So I'm going to talk about sweaters now and these are predominantly unusual sweaters, sweaters that are easy to make but maybe have different design details than just your average um, sweaters that you know you make year in, year in and year out. So although I've got you know, my favourites like your Unwind Sweater, your Megan Nielsen Jarrah and your Grain Line Linden, I want to make things also that are a bit more um, on the stylish side, something you can dress up with a pair of jeans and wear out as well. So the first one I'm going to talk about here is the Named Patterns Talviki. This pattern was shown by Polly a few months back now. She actually had it on, it looked really lovely on her. It's got these lovely kind of darts at the neck that shape the neck like a funnel and it has a really lovely side splits and mitered hem as well. Um, I love the look of Named Patterns. They are always beautiful on them. They're very popular um, but this one in particular really spoke to me and I would love to make one of these in the future. Uh, the other one was suggested to me by Emma by So Do It Emma and over in Scotland. Hi Emma. And this was the Stay Stitch, Stay Stitch Pattern Company it is over on Etsy and it's the Sierra sweater. This has a really unique kind of pleated sleeve, quite a big billowy sleeve and a cropped hem. Really lovely design and I think this would make a beautiful sweater uh, in the cloud fleets I have in my online store. The next sweater I have loved for quite some time now is the Lennox sweater by Tazuti Patterns. It's got great options for some color blocking. It's got a really unique kind of angular design at the front there. You could do so much with this if you wanted to make something really different with some planes or patterns. The next one I have been alerted to, which is a great multifunctional sweater with lots of different uh, designs and lots of different options, is the P4P Sweater Weather Jumper Set. So you'll see there's quite a lot of different uh, line drawings there and a lot of different options as well. And one of my very favorite um, sweatpants patterns is the Mama Bear Joggers by Patterns for Pirates. I have I still think these are the best fitting pair of sweatpants I've ever made. I love that they're just I've got a lovely um, kind of pocket, angle pocket design, and also you've got different options for pockets and inseam, patch front. You've got all that there. So a great, um, great pair of sweaters and joggers to make there. Next pattern I've seen that I love the look of, it's got a really unusual kind of tulip style curved hem. It's the Itch to Stitch Orono sweatshirt. A lovely kind of funnel neck, be beautiful in a fleece fabric. Um, something a bit more unique and unusual. Itch to Stitch have some beautiful uh, sweater designs there too if you're interested in heading over to see all of her patterns, PDF patterns. Yeah, I can really highly vouch for those. But this one in particular, I love the tulip shaping on the hem and the way it crosses over the body. Um, you can really give a casual look something a bit more special by using a pattern a bit different. 
Um, the other one I've noticed too is the Ready to Sew Jocko sweatshirt. Now this is done in a beautiful quilted fleece fabric. I think this would be stunning on. I love the fact that she's done the little press studs up the side um, that you can use there and you can have the splits open as well. Um, that one has quite a lot of different options there too, more of a tunic -y style. Uh, the Dorada Davies also has the Maxine, which is a dress or a sweatshirt. And I love the fact that she has those kind of spliced pieces at the front. You can even do piping or color blocking there, or even just leave it plain and have those, that stitching detail is very kind of modern and unique looking too. Um, fiber mood patterns, of course. Um, there is a fiber mood sweatshirt in here, which I think was the Joe, which is just a very simple sweatshirt. Um, yeah, this, Oh no, this is the Clements. This is um, has a really lovely pleating detail on the sleeve. Um, and there's also a, one called a Joe in here, which is just a very simple sweatshirt as well. That sleeve is really lovely. Um, but there's also the Leona Fiber Move, which has a really lovely kind of paneled yoke at the front and some kind of gathered effect on the sleeve. So the sleeves are a real statement, but they come off the yoke. So that to me is just such a really interesting modern looking um, sweatshirt. Uh, there's also the lovely pink uh, Paola drop sleeve uh, sweatshirt they've had with a beautiful uh, sort of drop sleeve and a billowy kind of puffed effect to the sleeve there too. So that one uh, is definitely one I would consider making because I love fiber mood patterns. The next one I have here is the one I've made last year. It's a So House 7 Cosmos sweatshirt. You can do that in two different neck versions. You've got the higher neck or the lower. You've also got your regular sleeve or your bell-shaped sleeve as well. So that's a really nice sweater to wear uh, with high-waisted pants or maybe a tube-style skirt. Uh, the other patterns I have here, one I made last year was the Sitka sweater by Hey June Patterns. That one is in a chevron style. Um, you can do color blocking. Uh, although I made the silly decision of having mine in cream and it really uh, yeah, tends to take a beating, I need to keep it a bit more. I need to wear an apron when I'm cooking, things like that. Cream and white to me is just something I can't do a lot of, even though I love the look of it. I love it with the pink and the mint green. The colors look beautiful, but not the most practical color. So I think that would look gorgeous in like a 70s vibe, maybe chocolate brown and orange and lime green. That would work really well with that chevron detailing. It was quite oversized. I remember, I do remember having to, um, having to take it in quite a bit and take a lot off the sleeves. Um, the other one is the Sheridan by Hey June, which has a couple of different options for sleeves. You've got the bishopy sleeve and you've also got the bell sleeve. It's more of a crop style with a band. So it's a little bit more of a dressy style sweater, but you've also got the kind of mock turtle, which sits kind of a little bit softer around the neck or the regular neckline as well. So there's so many beautiful style sweaters out there um, that you can make something a bit more special and unique. So if there's anything that you love, I'd love to hear if your favorite, uh, what your favorite sweater patterns are, something more on the unique side. Of course, we all know how well and loved things like your Billy sweatshirts are and your Linden grain lines. They are just tried and true patterns. But if you have anything that you know there's a bit of unique styling, I'd love to hear what that is. Um, if you could write in the comments what your favorite sweatshirt is to make and to wear, that would be fantastic too. So thanks for watching today. I hope you've got plenty of info there and a little bit of inspiration as well. And don't forget those new fabrics would be online if you'd wanted to purchase any of those. Uh, next week, of course, we have the box release on the 10th, which is the Moulin Rouge box. So very exciting on the 10th, on the Sunday, the 10th of July. That will be released at 7 p.m. And there's also a new pattern release happening by Pattern Emporium. Again, another new release as well. So, so much happening for my birthday week, uh, trying to keep on top of it all and uh, yeah, get some content happening for you guys and lots of new makes to show you guys, as well as getting mum back on here with her makes to show as well. So thanks for watching today. Take care, everyone and happy sewing. Bye for now.